Today on Ham Radio 2.0, we're going to update the firmware in the Baofeng Tech DMR 6x2 Dual Band HT, and it starts now. Shut up and sit down. Okay, folks, uh, good evening. Welcome to Ham Radio 2.0. My name's Jason. I'm KC5HWB. Uh, if this is your first time to join us here, consider subscribing below because on this channel we do reviews and how-tos of everything that's new in amateur radio. So, uh, the B-Tech 6x2 is, uh, and those of you who are familiar with this radio, you can see right now that my firmware is old. I've got firmware version 1.02 on it. Today, at the time of this recording, the newest firmware is actually... Um, 2.01 so it's like backwards from what i got i got 1.02 and i'm going to show you today uh the steps to update to 2.01 plus there's a new uh there's a cool new thing on the Baofeng tech website that i will pull up here in just a second that uh that's supposed to be a contact loader um digital contacts wizard powered by amateur radio digital we're going to try that out and see how that works so the first thing we want to do is uh you got to download the software let's go over to this view um, here. So here on this screen, you're going to download the software. Again, CPS and firmware version 2.01, the newest ones at the time of this recording. Uh, and then, um, which I've already done that. I've done that, so I'm going to go over here on my remote desktop screen. These are the instructions it installed to this folder here. These are all the folders inside the folder. It was a zip file, so I unzipped it, uh, brought it up here. I installed the virtual COM driver, which is here for a 64-bit operating system. I don't think I needed to do that. I think it was already on there, but I did it anyway, just to, just to be sure. And then I installed the actual CPS right here. So that's on there. And now we're going to go through and we're going to do, if I can click on the right window here, now we're going to do uh, the actual... There we go. Using too many computers at once. Now we're going to do the actual firmware update. So uh, the instructions here say to, uh, let's see, very important first step, back up your code plug. I've said this in many videos before, always, always, always back up your code plug. I don't have that problem because I back the heck up out of mine. <laughs> All mine are on my uh, Microsoft OneDrive anyway. So, all right, so turn off the BTEC radio. It's going to be the first step here. And then we're going to, uh, let's see, press and hold both of the following buttons, which is the PTT and the, and the alarm button on the top. So I'm going to press this here and this here, this button here and this button here at the same time, and then power it on. And you see the flashing red LED. As soon as you see that flashing, you can release the other two buttons. Connect your radio to the computer via the USB cable. That's what I'm going to do right now. Okay, we got the USB bunk there. Ensure that the cable is firmly connected. Yeah, yeah. Uh, launch the update application. This application can be found in the update folder of the CPS install location. Update, okay. So there, up, hmm. So it's the install, here we go, update. So you got to go to your, so it's not in the folder. It installed it with the CPS, okay. So we're going to run this. Yes, there's that here uh, open the update file choose the 201 underscore 2.01 underscore 2020 01 17spi file located in the folder click open file open successfully click OK choose the com port okay so I think what we're gonna do is uh, take this here open update file it's on my desktop, here, here, 
There's the SPI file, 2020-01-17. Good. Successful. Okay. COM port is COM6, and I just know that because I've used this computer to update a bunch of stuff. And now I'm just going to go right. Right to radio. And there we go. So right now the button is still flashing. I don't want to pull it too far. I don't want to mess with the... Uh, I don't want to pull the USB cable out of the computer. So the the LED light is still flashing red on the top, although it looks like it's going slower now than it was before. There we go. Right complete. Click OK there. Okay, so the radio is rebooting itself. Just like that. And now it's a blank white screen. Okay, uh, let's read the next step. So this is what the radio looks like now. It's got a white screen with uh, well, it does change those icons on there. So now, <laughs> so now we're gonna turn. Now we're gonna update the icons. Because the next step in the instruction says updating the BTEC DMR6x2 icons. We're going to do the same thing again. Well, not the same thing. Not the same thing. We're going to turn off the radio, hold down the PTT and the PF2, which is the lower key on the left side of your radio. On the left side. Oh, this one. Okay, so this one. This one here. So, so we're going to turn the radio off, hold down that key and that key the same time if I can get it turn it on the, the display will show update mode just like that release the buttons as soon as you see update mode okay connect it back to the computer got the USB tone Uh, using the firmware update application in t step 10, open update file and choose 6x2 pick v1.1b SPI. Okay. Open update file. That one right there. File success. Okay. Click OK. Choose the COM port. We'll do that again. COM speed. Choose the COM speed. 921,600. Nine, enable duplex. Click right. Duplex is enabled. COM speed's already there. We're going to change it to COM 6, like I said. Before, we're going to go right. And there it goes. And it still says update mode on the screen of the radio. Write complete. Click OK. The radio still says update mode on the screen and it's still flashing a green LED. So I'm going to go back to the instructions and see if there's anything further. OK. Upon completion of the update, your radio will reboot. Mm, I disagree. <laughs> Radio did not reboot. So, okay, if it's supposed to reboot, then I'm going to reboot it. I'm just going to turn the knob off. Turn it back on. We're going to go here. Nope, we're going to go here. And it's still weird. Okay, that's fine, because there's another step. So resetting the main control unit, the MCU. Uh, press and hold the PT talk and the PF1 key. This is the key below the PT 
T button. So the PF1 is here, PF2 is here. PF2 is what we just did for the uh, icons. So we're gonna turn this off. We're gonna hold down that key and that key and turn it on. And it says, are you sure you want to initialize radio? And it uh, says to release these two, which you already did that. And then it says to go here, initializing radio. Please wait, do not interrupt the process. Good advice. That's a good, um, that's a good sign there. Calibrate date, GMT minus six. Oh, there we go. Uh, two. Okay, it puts that. Ah, okay. I don't know which buttons do what, so I was just kind of guessing on the buttons. There we go. That's what it should look like. All right, so in the, in the middle of all that process, if your screen freaks out don't you freak out <laughs> i guess i guess is the lesson here don't freak out along with the screen because just follow all the steps in st including the the reset and then we're back to normal operating mode now it looks like a freaking any tone doesn't it that's because it is an any tone in, in the internally so now i want to go over here i'm about to lose camera power or battery power on that overhead cam so let's go over here real quick okay now if we go to to uh if you go to baofangtech.com forward slash DMR, and there's a DMR link from the front page. So you go to baofangtech.com and uh, click on the DMR link. It'll bring you to this page here. This is the link um, where you go to, um, if you go to support and software and then click on DMR, that's how you get there. Now you're here. Now at the top, now right here, amateur users download the latest amateur ID database via the amateur radio digital dmr six by two digital contacts wizard which is free so we're going to do that okay choose your radio which of course is the only one that's there like you can't choose anything else step two there are currently 155,688 DMR IDs available for download. Check the digital contacts limit and the version of firmware. I'm just going to try the whole thing because I just downloaded, the, I just uh, did the firmware, the latest firmware that they've got. So you can filter by, that's kind of neat. You can filter by country, U.S. state, U.S. Co county, call sign. That's kind of neat screen format that's there's no other um option besides that so i'm just going to leave all these as defaults and i'm going to go to step three and then i'm going to download some radios no longer had hold all contacts good to know download and there it is, custom contacts ID .csv. Right it right there. Okay. Now I'm gonna open the BTEC 2.01 CPS, which I just installed prior to starting all this mess. And I'm gonna go import digital contact list downloads custom contacts i'm not going to manipulate it at all i'm going to leave it the way it came from the website write it to the radio and see what it looks like because i don't want to uh i don't want to mess with it because i want to see what it looks like by default so i got to plug this back in okay and i'm going to go import now this may take a few minutes 
because I'm importing 155,900 some odd contacts. So we're going to wait for that to complete. I'm going to hit pause on the camera and we'll be back. All right, import complete. Uh, that took, I don't know, 10 to 12 minutes, something like that. I didn't put a timer on it, uh, but obviously it's going to take a while to import 155,000 plus contacts. So now I'm going to write to the radio. Actually, I'm going to go to set my COM port. That's one thing about the Anytone software. It does not detect your COM port. Anytone, BTEC, all this software is basically the same. Um, this is the BTEC radio and software, CPS, DMR 6x2 B from Beofeng Tech. By the way, there's a link in the description below to this radio. Now we're going to write to it. Do you wish to write? Yes, let's write digital contact data, not other data. I haven't opened a code plug yet. And I'm going to click that. It's going to go through that. And then it's going to take, and then it, the first step was importing the contacts into the CPS. And now the CPS is writing those contacts to the radio. So it's a multi-step process. And on the screen of the radio right now, it just says PC read. So um, no flashing LED. It just says PC read on the screen. Okay, so it went through the... Okay, now it's actually writing. It did some sort of scan, and then it did something else, and now it... Uh... Now it has... Uh... Now it's actually writing to the radio. That's going to take some time as well. So I'm going to pause again, because nobody wants to watch that. Okay, that's successful. And it wrote all 155,000 contacts to the to the memory, and uh, firmware has been updated, and now it looks just like an Anytone radio. So you've got a VFO mode, you've got your channel mode, you can load your code plug, and do all kinds of cool stuff with that. So uh, really great radio. Again, the uh, link is in the description below. You can check this out, and you can buy these directly from Baofeng Tech US te Baofeng Tech .com, I think it is, or from Amazon. And the Amazon link below is what I put down there. So makes it a useful radio, easy to load contacts. You don't have to really do anything special. You just load the file in there and go. 73 guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments below. Let me know if you've done this contact load, if you've, you're using this, uh, this latest firmware, if you like this radio, what you think about it. And um, catch you next time.